in this video, hi, this is Munir Ajam. Um, in this video, I probably will not be explaining anything. I just pose a lot of questions. Uh, many uh, of the people who might be listening to this uh, short video are probably familiar with the Pumba Guide, which is a guide to the project management body of knowledge produced by PMI. Uh, and it is a framework for project management that PMI advocate. I will be posing some question related to the Pumba Guide and let you think about it. Some point to ponder, as they say. One, have you noticed in the Pumba Guide that, for example, when we talk about audit, in the quality area, audit is considered part of the quality assurance process, which is an executing process. If you go to the risk management chapter, audit is part of the controlling process group. Because maybe, maybe because, I don't know why, in risk management there is no, an exe no executing process group. If we go to procurement, now procurement have a processes in planning and executing and control, but for some reason, procurement audit is in closing. Why is this? No idea. Where does audit belong? Well, in my view, audit is about reviews of project activities and work to make sure they are compliance with company standards and organizational processes and procedure. And the act of reviews in comparison between actual versus a plan or organizational basis typically would be a controlling process. So where should audit be? In our humble opinion, audit is a controlling process or should be part of the controlling process group. Again, does it matter? Maybe not. Unless you are taking a PMP exam, you'll have to, you have to know where everything fits. Another topic, traditionally in the Pumba Guide, we're staying on the Pumba Guide today, most, not most, all knowledge areas have a planning process and have a controlling process. Somehow during the development of the first edition, there used to be a process called manage a project team, which is a controlling process. And for some reason, the volunteer moved it, or whoever was updating the guide at that time, moved it from a controlling process to an executing process, which resulted in the fourth edition and the fifth edition that all knowledge areas have a planning processes, but when it comes to controlling processes, all knowledge areas except HR have a controlling process. Again, why is this? Nobody knows. Another point on the Pumbak as well, I'm not sure how many people have noticed this, obviously people like us who, uh, who work with the Pumbak and we've been working with it for 20 years and we use it in our classes, we have to notice these things. Another example point is that the first edition of the Pumbak guide in the definition of the charter, basically it said clearly uh, that the charter is a document that authorizes a project or phase. Again, go back to the fourth edition and you'll find those statements in the definition of a charter in chapter four. For some reason, in the fifth edition of the Pumbak, someone took the word or phase out. So now the definition of the charter in the fifth edition it's that the charter is a document that authorizes a project, period. So, it sounds like a, a contradiction between the fourth edition and the fifth edition. Is it? We don't know. Uh, or did the title, the definition of the charter, change between the fourth and the fifth edition? Again, we don't know. Uh, most people believed, even with the fourth edition and even before that, that the charter is a document for the project only, is not even for a stage, which might reserve, uh, uh, deserve another discussion by itself. One final point on the charter itself. If we look at the initiating process group in the Pumbak, which has only two processes, develop the project charter and uh, identify stakeholder. The definition of the initiating process group still says the initiating processes are for the project or phase. Okay, cool, great, no problem. 
So the initiating processes are for the project or phase. And the initiating processes are two. Identify stakeholders and develop charter. That means both of these processes are for the project or phase. Again, is this contradiction? The initiating process group says project or phase. The definition of a charter says project only. It doesn't say only, just say project and it deleted the or phase. So what is the case? These are questions and many more could come up as well in relation to the PMBOK. Unfortunately, there is no team with MPMI that specialize as a team of experts that can answer these questions so we can have a clarity. Anyway, try to get answer from PMI if you like, or if you have the answer, share them with us, and uh, we will be happy to publish them. Thank you.